Now, too much devotion to the dollar is widely regarded as one of the causes of the global financial crisis in 2008, whose aftershocks are still being felt in Europe today. There, countries that thought they had found a savior in the form of IMF loans are now criticizing the lender for holding them captive. Now, according to the IMF's bailout terms, a borrowing country has to slash jobs, pensions, and wages and change laws, all on the lender's whim. Spain, for example, forced around a million people out of work. More than half of the nation's young people are unemployed. Portugal is still dealing with a banking crisis and a shrinking GDP. Meanwhile, Greece, after six years of recession, has the worst unemployment rate in the EU. For more analysis, I am joined live by Peter Harris, a visiting lecturer in political science at Earlham College in the United States. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Now, according to the signed deal, the initial capital of the development bank amounts to $50 billion and is likely to rise another $100 billion are invested into the monetary reserve. Is that enough to challenge Western financial institutions? Uh, probably not, is the answer to that. Um, the estimates that I've seen, uh, the World Bank will still, even if this bank comes online, will still be lending about 17 times more annual, annually than this new development bank. Um, and at this point, we still don't even know that the bank will uh, kind of come online and be effective. We know that the deal has been signed, but if we look at the history of these kind of things, the, Eur the Eurasian Economic Union, in the security realm, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, international organizations built to rival Western institutions can actually be very difficult to make effective. Um, so it's unclear whether the organization will come online, and when it does, it will probably lack the capital to effectively rival uh, the Western institutions immediately. Although the symbolic value of the creation of a new bank is um, quite sizable. Well, if you look in theory, they should be a very formidable group. The BRICS nations make up about 26% of the Earth's land surface and have mm -hmm. nearly half of the world's population. Do you see the group's development as a step towards more of a multipolar world and away from the unipolar side of things? Yeah, I think that's clearly uh, the case. And symbolically, that's what the BRICS nations would like to uh, pronounce with uh, a, a move like this. Um, the one thing that the BRICS nations have in common, really the only thing that they all, all five of them have in common, is a desire to hasten the move away from a unipolar world towards a multi multipolar world. And that, this, is, this could be considered one step uh, along that road. Although, as I say, in practical terms, I mean, statistics like the land mass, uh, population, all these kind of things are misleading when it comes to economic clout. The funds, the two funds that are being proposed uh, today are going to un unlikely to eclipse their Western-oriented institutions. Now, according to a new joint declaration, financial institutions are set to protect its member nations from crisis scenarios. Do you think that more countries would like to have this kind of, of protection? And if so, what kind of countries could we see coming to the BRICS for help? I think there are a lot of nations that would uh, like this kind of institutional protection. As you said, one of the criticisms of the IMF um, and also the European Union is that it attaches a lot of conditionality uh, to the loans that it issues. And in a lot of cases, countries ask, or leaders ask, what have these conditionality agreements got to do with the need for the loan in the first place? So I think we could see lots of countries in um, the developing world, South America, Africa, East Asia, the Middle East, potentially, Central Asia, um, basically countries along the periphery of the BRICS nations with a real interest in, in joining this institution. The rub will be, for the BRICS nations, do they want to be on the other side, lending to nations that, as you say, uh, recipient countries of loans from the IMF and the European Union have a history of, let's say, biting the hands that feeds them, uh, being quite unhappy with the, the loan um, that's issued to them by the lender state. So uh, while this, this, this agreement might be good for the BRICS to insulate themselves against the Western-centered institutions, they may not want to have themselves lending to other countries who might not be so grateful for that help. Interesting to hear your thoughts. Peter Harris, visiting lecturer in political science at Earlham College in Richmond, Indiana. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Now, the latest on the crisis in eastern Ukraine is coming up shortly on RNT International. Stay with us.